Thanks, Ancha. Thanks for that presentation. Um, we've got we've got a little bit of time uh, now for uh, questions. So um, I noticed there hasn't been a, a huge rush on sticking the questions in the chat, but that's okay. Um, I do know that um, Christine has got her hand up, so I just want to check in with you, Christine, that you've whether you've got a question to ask. Um, Anybody at all? And that might be... I might just have to unmute her just in case for a second to see whether... I might not be able to... No, I can't. Yet. So, um, not hearing from Christine So at this point. So, um, happy to take your question if you get back to us. Um, have got a question from uh, Sarah Hope, uh, and this is to Nadia. Hi, Nadia. Just wondering if you have any time frames on the future of ATDW items. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess um, I think we spoke to there. There was um, the the BI dashboard, so that'll be coming out um, in the next couple of weeks. So that should be, yeah, you'll see that by the end of October. Um, and then for the translation, we're hoping that we can finalise that and do that by the end of this year um, for the translated content as well. And then on the, further on, we're working through a CRO, um, like, a, yeah, con conversion rate optimization framework. So we're doing a lot of research in that space around what does, like, what aspects of your profile um, both on the distributor websites, you know, on, on the STO websites and on your local regional websites, what aspects of that profile is what is um, in like creating conversion the most or prompting conversion the most, prompting a lead and prompting booking. Um, and then, so we're doing a lot of research in that area. So then we'll be able to make changes as well to how we collect content and how we also display that out. I think that'll be closer to next year. Um, and then the last thing on the what the future slide was also about a, a digital modernization project. So um, we're just starting that process at the moment, but we are, we do know that there is some work that we'd love to put into ATW. It works really well at the moment, but we'd love to re-energize the platform, um, make it a bit more user-friendly, change the, the usability of the platform, and also, um, you know, just also the technology it sits on and create some new advancements there to just to set it up for the next five, 10 years. So there will be a modernization project that we will be commencing next year, um, but that will take possibly 12 to 18 months before we fully realize all of the new modernization um, within the platform from that. But at the moment, we're just starting to do some planning, working out requirements with some of our key stakeholders, the state tourism organizations, as well as other technology players um, in the area. So, yeah, there's some time frames there. Thank you. And also, Nadi, just wondering, with the integration of um, ATDW and Google My Business, is that currently available now or is that still... Pending. Yeah, that one's available now. So yeah. we launched that one last month. Um, so when you do go in and next update your ATW profile, it should actually prompt you when you send your profile for review um, to our quality assurers, it'll actually prompt you then do you want to link and integrate your Google profile. And so you just have to then go and log into your Google and it links them together. And then ongoing from there, any updates that you do make within ATW. So if you may update your description, or some photos they can feed through to your Google My Business page as well. So if you're having to pop over there and do it afterwards. Um, and as I said, we're still in early stages of understanding whether we can get the deals and offers to do the same. And that'll be the next step to show them on a dedicated, like on the offers page within Google and, and some just some other opportunities that may be open there. But the, the integration with the Google My Business is currently live at the moment if you log in and have a look. Fabulous. That's a game changer. Thank you. Yeah, there's also a great insights dashboard. So we've brought in also to ATW, you can see your Google insights within the ATW platform as well. Um, so there's just some nice little graphs there to show how your Google um, My Business page is performing. If you, you know, I know they are available through Google, but yeah, just bringing them front of mind as well so you can start to see what your traffic looks like. 
um, those sorts of things, where it's coming from, if it's search or if it's on a map, um, that type of information all through that Google Insights dashboard as well. Right. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Thanks, Nadia. Uh, we've got a, a next question there from YMT. When can we expect to see the analytics dashboard? Yeah, I think I just answered that one. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, definitely before the end, like, yeah, early early October, early mid October. So in the next couple of weeks, you'll see that. We're in the um, final stages of testing at the moment. So that one, once it all passes, will be ready to come, come through. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Now this one um, from Christine, again to you, Nadia, why uh, can't we use iPhone photos as they take 24 hours to update any new additions? If not appropriate, they should be able to edit what's good or bad. I have a camera, I've never, I never use it. I always use my iPhone for social media and my website was built using iPhone photos only. So yeah, you any comments there? Yeah, absolutely. So you can use iPhone photos. Um, the reason that we have some minimum standards, which are actually recently reduced, um, so they were higher than what they were previously, but we've reduced them down to 1600 by 1200 pixels. Um, those, those, those minimum requirements you can take on like an iPhone 3. So it may just be maybe setting like whether you're the settings and when you save the photo or when you're maybe downloading it to your computer, if it's reducing the file size could be an issue. Um, but you can definitely use iPhone photos in your HW profile. But the reason we have those settings is because on a lot of our websites, and, and as you'll see on some of the media sitting behind um, yourself there, Jared, and, and things like that, that a lot of the media on these websites actually have your photos and images blown up quite large on a page um, on certain things, like they might be used as a banner and things like that when they are promoting your business. So the lower resolution photos can then become blurry and things like that. So there are those set minimum standards that we we put in place to make sure that those images show the best on any website that's showing us. So we also ask that you don't put um, like written words on top of like, don't Photoshop a photo and put words on top because that can be cropped out. If one website shows your photo in a square, another one might show it in a big rectangle, things might get cropped out. So those rules are in place mainly to, yeah, to make sure your listing is displayed um, the best and, and, it, and shows the best, you know, yeah, view of your product and doesn't sort of look blurry and things like that. So it's more to captivate as many consumers that you come in through the door um, on the websites. So yeah, if if you wanted Christine to touch base um, and you have any of those photos that maybe aren't being accepted through the platform as well, we can resize them. So we can potentially try to resize them up bigger um, and see if that works. So yeah, we can definitely support there if you want to send them through or get in contact with us. Okay, thank hope you. hope that answers. Oh, I think the next one's mine as well. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. Is it vice versa with the updates in Google My Business? No, not at this point. Um, it is just A to W through to Google, um, not the other way. Um, so, yeah, that's just the way we've structured it. Um, it, yeah, sort of got a bit more challenging with the two-way com communication. Um, and we'd love for you to be coming to A to W. <laughs> So benefits benefits on both sides um, as the the reason there. And there's a follow up there from Emily around uh, where the listings and content are mostly distributed. Yeah, I think I did have that slide, and I've realised after I finished speaking, I um I may have missed it. Um, but generally, the as as Jan touched on her presentation the biggest distributors or the most traffic that you'll receive through the ATW platform is from your state um, state website. So New South Wales and the Visit New South Wales website. There's also Australia.com. And as we've been speaking about North of the Murray and maybe your regional tourism organization website. So that's generally where most of your traffic will come from. We do also have other commercial distribution partners um, and so like, you know, the likes of RACQ, Qantas, um, those sorts of things, Road Trippers have a, have a web app as well. They're an American brand. So there are some other distribution partners that are more in the commercial space and they'll all have generally a different distribution strategy. So um, every distributor that comes from us will have 
an idea of what they're promoting, whether that's one of our categories, they may just be promoting events um, and whether that's nationwide or just for a particular region. So those strategies of each distributor website kind of determines who will show up and what. Um, so obviously your listings in the Murray may not show up on a Cairns website that's promoting Cairns um, because it's just not relevant to their audience. So yeah, you can have a look at our website, atw.com.au as well. There is an Our Distributor um, tab there and you can put in New South Wales, your region and your category, and then that will show up some of the potential distributors that will be showcasing your content. Our new insights dashboard will also be doing the same thing it when that gets released we're starting to show you and pull you through based on analytics who's showing your profile yeah. if i may just chime in there briefly um just in terms of atdw as well i mean the visit new south wales website is um, based on ATDW listings. And anytime we run a marketing campaign, whether it's road trips, whether it's um, uh, the Love New South Wales campaign and also our upcoming recovery marketing campaign, which the Murray will be a featured region in, we drive traffic, whether it's um, on our socials, digital advertising, all these advertising goes back to our website. And if you're not on the website, you're not benefiting from these campaign activities, basically. So, as I said, it's just it's not just having that visual presence, but also um, having yeah benefiting from all the marketing activities that we do as Destination New South Wales. I know that um, uh, Murray Regional Tourism, um, their um, website is um, the Visit the Murray website is ATW based. So any promotions that they do on social, on digital, any advertising goes to their website. So if you're not on ATW or you're listed, your business is not listed or represented on our um, websites, you, you can't benefit from our campaign activities either. And you're just losing out on this visibility. Okay, thank you. Um, well, just a, a question from me now for Ancha. What, um, what specific resources uh, does Destination New South Wales have to assist tourism businesses, particularly with the recovery period? Yeah, I might just, um, I've got a, might just quickly share my screen again, just a sec. Hope that works. Um, so we recently um, announced two new initiatives for the New South Wales First Program to deliver uh, um, basically a couple of um, free skills development and training opportunities. The first one is the one that you see here is a partnership between Destination New South Wales and the Restaurant and Catering uh, Australia. Um, we've developed a group of three free online short courses um, on customer service specifically for hospitality and tourism. The courses are tailored to um, basically specifically to New South Wales um, tourism and hospitality businesses. They're available on demand and can, can be completed by participants at their own pace. Um, I think it takes about 40, they're kind of, they're called micro credentials and takes about 45 minutes, maybe not even that long to complete. And once completed, the participants, um, they get a little online badge that they can put on their CV or their LinkedIn profile. Um, the topics include um, customer service, managing customer expectations. That one has a COVID-19 twist to it and emotional awareness and customer service. So I think that was kind of our way of addressing also the skills gap in the hospitality industry and really, um, yeah, skill up some people to um, provide those customer services. Um, the second initiative um, was or is um, a Facebook and Instagram for tourism webinar series, which we deliver in partnership with Facebook and Destination New South Wales social media team. They have this five um, webinars in the series and they're providing basically tailored content for New South Wales tourism businesses to help them develop, optimize their presence on social media. Um, the skills are really great for building your online community, engaging future visitors, especially now where everyone is kind of, they see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, so they're looking for their next trip and also help drive bookings once people can travel, obviously. Um, two of the webinars have already run, the optimizing your Facebook presence and engaging your audience on social media, but they're available on demand. Um, the next one is on the 13th of October is um, creating stories on Instagram. Um, then we've got one in October that's about capturing social content on your phone. 
and then um, one on Inspire Action on Instagram. So as I said, all of those ones um, you can register uh, for now for the three remaining one and the two other ones that have already run, they're available on demand on our website. Um, the last, the third one that I just wanted to briefly mention is that we um, launched a set of new guides to basically help tourism uh, business resilience, especially to um, bushfires and natural disasters and adverse, adverse weather events. There are three quick tip guides that provide practical tips and advice on how to prepare for, respond uh, to and recover from natural disasters, including um, how to pr prepare contingency options for your visitor experience to quickly pivot um, your operations in case something does happen, ensure your messaging on social media is in line with the travel advice, and also, um, as I said, how an online booking software can help you easily communicate um, with your um, booked in travelers and make some changes to, um, to those um, bookings as well. So there is a, a couple of um, different resources that are, yeah, helping with the recovery to really be ready. And as you said yourself, like to really be ready once travel resumes and to pick up your social media and do those things now so that you're ready um, once the, uh, in hopefully the influx of travel travelers will come to the region. Okay, thank you. Now we've got, uh, I'm conscious of time, we've got five minutes, but there's a couple of uh, quick questions. Uh, one from Emily. Do you find that bookable experiences that are paired with other local businesses perform better than just a deal from an accommodation provider? Um, to a certain extent, yes. I think that um, the days of especially domestic travellers, the days where someone is booking a three-day trip locked in from start to finish are over. But um, especially with, um, as I said, with where there is a, a synergy between the businesses, that is certainly a, a worthwhile an opportunity to explore. But travelers nowadays, they're pretty tech savvy and they're pretty well versed in searching what's available online. So uh, partnering with another business, I think is um, it's good for cross promotion of those um, different experiences. And it just adds, I guess, especially as an accommodation provider, it adds value as long as the visitor still has that flexibility to decide um, whether they want to just book the accommodation or want to book the, the accommodation and the, the tour or the experience as well. But um, yeah, so I hope that answers the question. I was going to add is that as well, um, Angie, just to, and, and possibly Emily as a suggestion. So where you do have a holiday park, you know, there are also, if you have maybe an on-site restaurant, um, another way to possibly get additional visibility is to to make sure that you have those as two listings. So I know I see a lot of maybe hotel chains that have a restaurant and do offer some of those additional services or additional packaged products. They're often listed all just under the one the one accommodation profile in ACW. So you can actually split that out and have them give them their own individual presence, their own photos, their own, you know, their own visibility. And again, that's another way to increasing and doubling your exposure on um, the STO websites. So that's just probably another thing to think about that if you are offering maybe the holiday park, but you've also got, you know, a cafe or something like that, create them as two listings, sell that as, as, as its own um, its own entity as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And the last uh, question there from Sarah. Um, yes, the presentations, including ours, will be available to people. Um, so happy to share those with everybody after, after we've finished the session. Um, which brings me to the fact that we're two minutes out from our intended closing time. So unless there's any late questions, we're, I'm happy to wrap it up. Um, Certainly from our point of view, if there are any questions that come out of today's session for anybody, happy for you to reach out um, through Kyla and uh, we'll certainly uh, respond and provide assistance where we can. And um, yeah, good luck to everybody as we get back to uh, normal business operations, hopefully in the next few weeks. Um, so thank you for your time today. Thank you to uh, Nadia and Ancha for your time today too. I appreciate, appreciate it. Uh, and Jan, um, so thank you for the time you've taken to, uh, to uh, talk to us today. And uh, we look forward to catching up with everybody soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks for having us.